Welcome to our session on SUSE Manager as a Service from NTT at SUSECON 2022. We are very pleased to present our experience and service offerings, and we will start with a short introduction of the speakers. My name is Christian Krischke, and I've been working at NTT in Germany since 2016 in the area of business outsourcing and managed services. Currently, as a lead service delivery manager and business developer for a large automotive manufacturer in Germany. And I'm Dominic Wombacher with NTT Germany since almost six years. My current role is head of infrastructure operations in an ITO business unit. We will talk about the following topics in our session. In the introduction chapter, we explain our motivation for the new service and briefly introduce NTT. In the limitation options of SUSE Manager, we will show the possibilities and how SUSE can be integrated in different environments. A central reason for the use of SUSE Manager is to be seen in the context of security and compliance challenges. Then we present the Zoomer as a service developed by NTT. And finally, the summary. So let us start with the chapter introduction. You always need a good reason for such an important and successful service. In various customer environments, we repeatedly met non-standardized servers, different patch and release versions, and gaps in security implementations. The reason regular given for this situation were the repetitive high efforts required to create a compliant environment, which can only be implemented securely with an extended IT operations team. In addition, there's often little knowledge in dealing with the Zuma at the customer side. So this enabled us to develop the Zuma as a service from NTT, and with the standardized use of the Zuma we have succeeded in minimizing the high manual efforts and reducing the daily risks in IT operation. What is about our clients? We as NTT see transformation emerging on two levels. First, digital transformation. How you transform to provide better customer experience, new revenue channels, and to grow your business. Second, operational transformation how you transform internally to optimize what you are doing at the front end of your business. This is the reality organizations currently manage every day. New is the business model that has emerged to operate in this digital world. We call this the intelligent business. I would like to highlight one of these five important points on the slide in particular, namely, hyperconnected securely workplaces, which in the last two years have made it possible to continue working IT almost without restrictions. So we are bringing together the best capabilities, technology, infrastructure, and services to accelerate your digital agenda. And we are able to do this mainly through the global leverage with local presence we have. Besides all of global capabilities, what is really critical? It is the depth of skill that we have. So if you look at the bottom left, we have about 22,000 professionals who are certified specialists in our regions and countries that can help you deliver the business outcomes you expect. And besides a lot of certifications, we will also be able to achieve the SUSE partner status platinum soon. Okay, enough about the introduction for now. We will go on to concrete options for the use of SUMA. So I hand over to Dominic for the next chapter. Thanks, Christian. Um, I will talk a little about um, daily IT challenges. Then we take a look at what is SUSE manager actually yeah so what's the product and what can it be used for then the benefits for using SUSE manager and also some of the implementation options first um, typical IT challenges in our example we split them between day zero and day two 
Um, div zero, quite easy, let's say it like that. It's just about provisioning configuration deployment. So you actually know what you want to achieve and you just build it. In day two, um, the continuous effort starts. You have to take care about patch management. You have security and compliance topics to address. Um, you have to monitor your environment, all these different things on a daily basis. But also manual patching. That can introduce a lot of different patch level in your environment. So that ends up in risks of outdated systems or that you have vulnerabilities in your environment. So let's say it like that. Things get just time intense and it results in unicorns, snowflakes in your environment, which are just hard to manage. So what actually to do now? We, we learned that there are too many challenges out there. Um, how can you make things easier? You could wait for a miracle, for example, but don't. Yeah, just start using SUSE Manager instead. First, let's quickly take a look on what SUSE Manager is. SUSE Manager is an infrastructure management solution. It can help you with a lot of different topics, like optimizing your operations, reducing costs, also compliance and security by providing data and a lot of insights in your environment and taking care about rollout of patches. Actually, it just simplifies things for you and helps you to regain control of your IT. More about SUSE Manager later. For now, we will just focus on implementation options. You might have different requirements, you know, like compliance related or location of your data. So where can you save your data? Need it to be in the same country, whatever. Yeah. Um, availability and skills of your internal IT resources are also an important point about the decision. What entity can offer is um, to host SUSE Manager in an own data center in Frankfurt. But we can also run it for you on a public cloud or hyperscaler like Microsoft Azure, or even on premise if you want to. So, first, um, SUSE Manager hosted at NTT. If you decide to go with that solution, great choice. Just sit back and relax. I mean it. Yeah, so infrastructure, monitoring, backup. All these things we take care about. We provide you with a dedicated SUSE Manager instance, guaranteed resources, everything dedicated to you. We help you with the registration of your clients. We provide all the standard operating system repositories to you. And if you want, we can also include custom and third party repositories. So, what's the difference between a custom and a third party repository? For example, if you want to install um, Isinga, Grafana, any third party solution where the packages are either not part of the regular operating system repositories or you need a more up to date version, you would pick the repositories from the vendor. That's a third party repository. We can make them available to your clients and take care about the synchronization. A custom repository is meant to hold packages that you created. For example, a business application you were developing and want to roll out to your clients, or a software where you included a patch on your own and either you want to push it to the clients to fix some bugs. All possible, we can all provide this for you and manage it. The only thing that we need to do that is a VPN connectivity between our data center, in this case, in this scenario in Frankfurt, and your environment. That's necessary so that the SUSE manager can actually reach your clients. Also, a SUSE manager proxy is required in your environment. So what's a SUSE manager proxy? The only direct connection between your environment and the infrastructure at NTT side will go through the proxy. So the proxy is the only system that actually connects to the SUSE manager. But all of your clients in your environment are connecting to the proxy. That means that saves a lot of bandwidth and also enhanced security. 
Let's take a look on on-premise. You might have various reasons why you decide to go with an on-premise installation. It could be also a compliance, um, that you have compliance uh, requirements that you have to fulfill. Um, maybe you want even more control, full control of all your data. Or also you started um, already using SUSE Manager. Maybe you build a proof of concept or you have SUSE Manager up and running already, but you're at a point where you want to hand over it to um, someone for further enhancement for ongoing operations. That's also something we can do for you. Everything else um, from a service and support perspective is actually quite similar to the hosted option. There's no much difference. The whole infrastructure part is up to the customer. It's up to you. We also rely on a VPN connection. Why? So our operations team need to access your SUSE manager server. Otherwise, we can't manage it for you. So that's why VPN is still important in that scenario. SUSE manager is optional. Uh, SUSE manager proxy is optional in that scenario. Um, it could be useful when you have branch offices, for example. So um, you are in SUSE manager in um, your headquarter. You have multiple branch offices. Each branch office receives um, a SUSE manager proxy. And then you have the same benefits as we already talked about in the host adoption. So it saves bandwidth, enhanced security, something to consider. And also in a hybrid cloud strategy, it would be more or less the same that you then use SUSE manager proxy and place it in the public cloud environment. So um, most likely you will have a mixed environment. It would be great to have just one operating system to support, but that's unlikely. Yeah. Either for historical reasons or why there were some specific requirements of an application that you need to run a specific distribution. So it can end up that you have multiple um, different vendors. The good thing is SUSE Manager doesn't necessarily mean that it's only about uh, SUSE and SUSE Linux Enterprise Server. There's a wide area of support clients. So Red Hat Enterprise Linux and a lot of derivatives like Oracle Linux, Amazon Linux, Rocky Linux, even Alma Linux. Also Debian, Ubuntu, they can be all managed with SUSE Manager. And the good thing is, um, it's all the same way, so it doesn't make any difference from a day-to-day administrator perspective which operation system we actually use and support with SUSE Manager. So SUSE Manager is, in that scenario, your real single source of truth for infrastructure management. And now we will hand over back to Christian to talk a little more about um, security and compliance and our services. Thank you, Dominic. And let's now get into the topic of security in combination with SUSE. SUSE Manager can be likely a security compliance surveillance system. It provides an easy to use interface to CVE data, allowing you to easily search for public known information about security vulnerabilities and exposures. And unlike other management tools, you can use Man SUSE Manager to find which of all our systems are affected and quickly remediate any vulnerabilities. So let's continue these topics in the next slides. Now we have to dive a little bit deeper into understanding why patch compliance is a key criteria for IT operations. There are a lot of officials regulations, especially in Europe that pose a significant challenge to any IT operation. The standards listed here alone, such as GDPR, HIPAA, PCI, and ISO certifications, require a careful handling and implementation of patch compliance. And patch management is also an important part of the ITIL and lifecycle management processes. In patch management, the security topics are represented in particular by the CVE list. With the CVE list, you got important information about the issue of possible vulnerabilities. With the support of the SUSE Manager CV audit feature, 
you see which systems are affected and you got important information about the severity, the location and the version of the issue. What helps to correctly evaluate and mitigate the event. And how will you meet security requirements for large and mixed environments over time? In addition, SUMA offers the important interface to open SCAP the security content automation protocol, which is the basis for standardized compliance checks, and not only for SUSE, but also for most known Linux distributions. The output generated by Zuma through the OpenSCAP interface allows full transfer to the comprehensive security solutions of OpenSCAP toolkit, like the OpenSCAP workbench. With this support, this leads to the fulfillment of the required compliance standards in your IT environments. So, that brings us to the managed SUSE Manager service developed by NTT. The Zoom as a service is derived from the preceding formation and our experiences. Three main use cases have emerged for the service, which address the main challenges of capacity, complexity, and security in IT operations organizations. First, reduction of operational risks and expenses through implementation outside of business hours. Then, in heterogeneous Linux environments, experienced technicians carry out the activities in a standardized manner. And further, to meet the complex and extensive requirements of the security and compliance topics. This leads us to the service description for SUSE Manager as a service. We as NTT provide the service in two levels. With the basic level, which enables the entry into the SUSE Manager, all services for the SUSE Manager itself are provided and with the full managed service, the complete implementation of patch deployment is additionally offered. In the design phase of the basic level, we determine the optimal location as already discussed in the chapter implementation options and the required resources for the SUMA instance. Also the operating systems, Linux versions and variants of the clients in the IT environment are found out for a clear view of the patch deployment process. The biggest obstacle in driving patch deployment is often the poor accessibility of the clients for the SUMA. So the connections also will be tested and possible solutions will be identified. In the operation phase, SUMA is initially implemented at the plant location on premise or cloud-based and updated on a monthly basis. The required operating systems baselines and rules are generated as a starting point for the OS patch deployment. And importantly, the baselines also updated and tested on a monthly basis. And to get the status of the security patch compliance, a full CVE report of the clients is generated compared to the previous months. As already mentioned, the actual patch deployment on the clients is carried out by the customer himself at this basic level. The next level of our SUMA service means a major expansion of our capabilities. With our full managed SUMA as a service offer, we have all services from the basic level plus the deployment of the patches on the clients. This is now not carried out by the customer, but by the SUMA as a service from NTT. Three additional services are offered. In preparation for the patch deployment, the patch and release plan with the corresponding patch calendar is created. This ensures full transparency of the downtimes during the implementation and the time schedule for all affected systems. At customer requests, we supplement the patching process with pre and or post tasks, e.g. to shut down applications in an orderly manner 
or to put them back into operation in a structured manner. It is also possible to integrate the customer's own application specific repositories into the patch deployment process. In the monthly deployments of the patches, the clients are restarted if necessary, and then the basic functionality are tested, such as an error of restart and working connections of the clients. If something goes wrong during the deployment process, then we can involve our third level engineers to help solving possible issues in the environment. And in addition, sometimes it is necessary to do an ad hoc rollout of highly important security patches, as we saw beginning of this year with a log4j vulnerability. After all of that, we create a full report to show the results of the deployment wave and the status of the patch compliance of your whole environment managed by Zuma as a service. And let me show you now a typical simple graphic output as part of the security compliance report we generate out of the Zuma as a service. These graphics shows, show very clearly how the number of new CVs has increased a lot after three months. Even though most CVEs are only important or moderate, but about two thirds of the systems with critical security issues are affected. This also shows very clearly how important it is to be patch compliant and to deploy patches at short intervals preferred Thanks, Christian. Um, I think one important thing that we have to mention here is that SUSE Manager is way more than just simple patch management. Okay. Simple patch management, you get what I mean. So patch management is already very complicated and critical, as Christian already pointed out. But there's even more. There are more features and also services that we can offer. Um, let me explain to you the four most important ones. Let's start with configuration management. SUSE Manager is actually a full featured Salt Master server. Salt is an automation engine comparable to Ansible. So you define your expected state and then Salt will take care about to configure a client accordingly. SUSE Manager also has an Ansible integration. That means that you can reuse existing playbooks. Or let's say like that, you don't have to learn salt if you already have Ansible knowledge. Either way, that's also something we can fully take over for you. So we can take care about writing all these automations. For example, um, you might have requirements for operating system hardening. Now let's say um, you have to change the SSH daemon config to allow only a specific set of encryption ciphers for compliance reasons. Then configuration management can help you with that. It get defined once centrally in SUSE Manager, and then SUSE Manager take care about to roll it out to your clients and ensure that they are all configured in the same way. Another example would be um, local Linux accounts. Let's say you need a service account on 10 of your systems. Um, you can configure it that centrally in SUSE Manager, name, password, hash, SSH key, whatever you need, um, and then roll it out to those 10 clients. Even if changes were made locally um, by an administrator, SUSE Manager will just overwrite them and ensure that a specified state is always given. Another topic is subscription management. SUSE Manager provides information about the consumed subscriptions. That's especially interesting when you use SUSE systems with additional add-ons like um, Slash for SAP or high availability. This can help you to optimize the actual usage, but also the costs and to stay compliant because you can always match your actually used subscriptions with your subscriptions that you bought from SUSE. Then we have live patching, a very interesting feature because it can 
dramatically reduce your plant downtime. It's about applying security kernel patches at runtime during business hours without any sort of restart. The technology behind that is called KGraft and it's developed and supported by SUSE. So that's a feature that's very reliable and it's used in a wide area of business critical uh, applications already today. Then we have image management. If you need um, customized operating system or even container image, that feature can help you. It relies on key view profiles and Docker files where you actually define what customizations you need and what's the expected outcome of this build. And then as soon as a build was completed based on your customization, it get pushed to a central image store. And from that image store, you can either um, use features in SUSE Manager to deploy new systems in your environment, or you can also use that image store um, to create containers on a Kubernetes cluster or stuff like that. Good. Um, let's quickly talk about um, SUSE Manager. And, and let's mention here that it's an open source solution that's actually based on Uyuni. The Uyuni project is the upstream of SUSE Manager. So what does that mean? That means that SUSE Manager is actually a commercial offer. It has commercial support. It's based on the source code of Uyuni, um, but with a different release cycle. And it's actually also more stable. Uyuni, for example, get released every month on a rolling release strategy. That might not be the best fit for a company no, which relies on um, more sustainable features and more stability. Due to the strict um, upstream first policy from SUSE, every sort of bug fix feature um, need to go through a uni, and then later it becomes part of a SUSE manager release, not the other way around. So why does that and, and open source in that context matter for you as a customer and for us as NTT? It allows us in-depth troubleshooting of the infrastructure of SUSE Manager or Uyuni. Yeah. This wouldn't be possible with closed source solution. Only open source allows us to really understand what happens under the hood and troubleshoot um, any upcoming issues in a way that we can really work forwards a solution. It also allows us to create own patches and fixes. So why should you choose SUSE Manager as a service as NTT? We are actively involved in the Uni project. That means we provide community support. So we help other users to get their Uni systems up and running, fixing issues. Um, we also provide patches and contribute uh, improvements to the Uni project. For example, if an API endpoint is missing, but we or our customers needed to improve the automation of SUSE Manager, that would be something that we can contribute to the OUNI project. So do the upstream first policy from SUSE, it will go to a next SUSE Manager release. Also our strong partnership with SUSE. Throughout the years, um, we were heavily relying on SUSE Enterprise Server and also SUSE Manager for the success of our customers. And all these things build a strong relation and partnership with SUSE. All these things, the partnership with SUSE, our involvement in the UUNI project, has SUSE Manager as a service as a result. Thank you, Dominic. So finally, we would like to point out the five most important statements regarding the value of SUSE as a service from NTT. At first, we see the reduction of operational risks in IT's daily maintenance and security topics for the customer. Secondly, the delivery of this complex process takes place from a single source of truth, which leads to a reduction in effort. Thirdly, this means that the customer has additional time for core tasks in IT, especially for transformational challenges. And fourthly, the full transparency and status of the service results can be viewed and audited. 
And for now, and last but not least, our ability to constantly develop the service with new technology. So, after all of that, we hope we could show you some interesting aspects of your of our new Zoom as a service from NTT, and thank you for your attention. Yeah, and if you have any questions or comments, feel free to reach out to Christian and myself whenever you want. We're happy to answer all of your questions and looking forward to hear from you. Thank you.